they always thought they were Americans, and they really were. It's just some people didn't think that. They were only allowed to take what they could carry, and this is a little girl. She really doesn't understand why she's in the internment camps, I don't think. I love writing letters, and I was interested in what they talked about to the people on the outside. They said a lot of bad stuff about the camps. They talked about not having their citizenship and their water. Said, we had no hot water. Our cold water contained chlorine, and the smell and taste were repulsive. I also learned about a girl named Yuri Kochiyama, and she was at Jerome, and she she became involved in the community life, and she helped organize a group, and they wrote letters to for soldiers that, of Japanese ancestry that were fighting. Well, I just kind of remember them as something the United States did and wasn't very good, and I always remember things that I do, and if it was bad, and I'll remember not to do it again because this is really bad. If they answered a no to 27 and 28, they were sent to a lake and had to live in a jail cell like that. They titled an application for leave clearance to try to trick them so they wouldn't think. They thought if they answered it right, they would get to leave. So, um... <laughs> They just didn't know what would happen t to them if they answered no. So a lot of them d did answer no. If I had known what would ha what would happen to me, I would answer yes. But if I d didn't know, I I would answer no. We found a lot, found out a whole bunch about exploring VJ Day because. At first, I just knew that it was the day when we won World War II, and um, but then I figured I found out that we dropped two atomic bombs on them, and that's how. And I think it was really weird how we won and everything. We consider ourselves the good guys when we drop bombs, big, huge bombs, the only one in history. This was actually an art project, and we were focusing on the. Japanese Americans before they were put in internment camps and after and before they were put in, the, in these internment camps they wanted to prove to America they might not look they might look different but they're still the same so they put signs up on stores that they aren't saying I am an Amer American the same thing has happened with Muslims and Arab mm -hmm. Americans They've been mistreated and every, and they've been discriminated against. Just and it's been since September 11th, which really had nothing to do with a bunch of Arab Americans, but they're still treated almost as bad as Japanese Americans. We know that lots of people learn different ways. That's something we've learned in East Lab. Everyone's different, so everyone learns different ways. And so we've created different um, medias so different people can learn about the Japanese term. So we've created documentaries, we've created GPS, GIS, we've done exhibits. So this way everyone can find something to connect to. As you can see, all it is is that this is all they have at Jerome to commemorate this monumental time in our nation's history. This is an outline of the camp. Uh, all around it are cotton fields, basically. It's just a little isolated section, an area. Over here is the water tower where they store the water. All I'm trying to do is just get this stuff on a map so you can just show how they were brought here and just made a live in no man's land with hardly any of their belongings and just put things on a map so people can tell that there's history lying just so far away, just that far. The first lesson is to not let anything like this happen again. That's the first and most important lesson that I think. We played basketball in Roar since like I was in fourth grade and none of us ever knew it was there. So it's not something that's ever talked about. So really, I uh, was wanting to 
help benefit others in the county in our area just so they'll know that uh, that there is camps and there's history right on our own back door. I wasn't actually in East Lab when it first started and I just came in here and was looking through their pamphlet and um, I was shocked <laughs> and I just couldn't understand it and I just kept thinking well what if it was you know my family. I didn't know. I didn't know they had camps in Arkansas either. I mean, neither. I didn't neither know was a camp. Japanese camp. No, I, I just thought he was German. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't I, didn't know know I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Talking about uh, concentration camps, and I was like, and then when he said Arkansas, that already, blew me away. I was like, like Arkansas. We learned, learned about them right. concentration camps early. Why are we talking about them now? He was like, Japanese American. In concentration camps in Arkansas. I never even knew that. I swear I did. But I was, I was like, it's camps here. It was some camps here. <laughs> <laughs> out, of, out of all the states. Yeah. Women in America doesn't like to admit it's screw ups. That's why it's just now coming out. It's like since September 11, like people who kind of look like people from Iraq, Iraq people be like, oh, it's oh, been get away. I you know, know, yeah, yeah. yeah people yeah. like, in the airport, like they see them, they probably like double yes. search them. Yeah. Or make Just because sure, they look yeah, like that. They look like or something. Or something like that. No. Yeah, it oh, is. He's right. It it's is still something. going on, but it's not probably like. It's not war. So it's like real, like camps. They ain't putting them in no camps or nothing. I think I learned that you shouldn't take freedom for granted. Because, like, even the stage that we're going through now, our freedom could be taken away almost at any time.